the spirituality program attracts people from many walks of life, and we love that mix of people who come to take classes with us and experience community. So they share some characteristics. One of them is they come for rest. Uh, our programs are gently programmed so that people know when they come that they'll have time to rest their physical beings, to rest their minds, to rest their spirits, um, and just sometimes being in a different, uh, different physical space can make a huge difference for them. So rest is one of those, one of those things that people come for. Another thing that they um, find in our program is, um, uh, is other people who are seeking similar things. And that, and that I would, in broad terms, um, say is seeking spiritual depths. So we tried in our programs, we don't try, we do, we offer an environment that encourages people to uh, seek God more deeply, both internally and externally. So we provide uh, interesting and uh, stretching content that perhaps goes beyond what they might find in, in other contexts. We encourage people to worship with their heart, and mind, and soul, to really open up their whole being to the presence of God uh, with companions who are on a similar journey. And um, the combination, it's really a combination of things that we provide in, that, in the context of a course or retreat that really allows people to begin to listen more deeply to their own heart, to uh, the voice of God in their lives. Um, some people are coming with, with questions, big questions that they're trying to discern. And uh, this environment um, that we create together as a group of people really facilitates uh, being able to hear both uh, our own deepest, truest voice and also the voice of God. So there are six words that I thought of that describe the spirituality program. And the first word is community. Um, I have said often in the last, well, with the last several classes that I've met with, that uh, what we have in this program is spiritual community. It is community that we create together. And, and it is not, it's just not like any other that I've experienced. Uh, so for me, it's been a, a great gift to know that every time we gather that the sense of this community that is um, wise, discerning, and uh, largely contemplative is, is going to be there. And I rely on that as I come in. I know that will be the case, and I know that people who come to our programs know that will be the case, and it provides a sense of, of, of grace, for lack of another word, that graced sort of space and way of being together that, that we can rely on being there. It's a great comfort to me, and I believe it is for other people in the class. Related to community is the word welcome. The Center for Lifelong Learning is known for its hospitality, um, and uh, that is especially true in the spirituality program. I find that as we welcome people into our courses and programs, that it's not just it's not just our staff here the, and the program leaders that are welcoming. The, participant, the participants themselves begin to welcome each other and welcome the new people who come to join us along the way. And it's a lovely thing. It's a lovely thing to observe this sense of welcome and hospitality. Another. Um, aspect of the program that I think is so important is that the program is holistic. I mean, I, I talk about rest, I talk about, um, you know, encouraging uh, deep and uh, deep thinking and uh, the intellect. We encourage soulfulness, um, 
listening with the heart as well as the mind and the ears. We encourage rest for the body. I mean, this takes in and encompasses the whole person. We want the whole person to be um, nourished um, while they're here. And I think more broadly than that, we it's not just kind of this inner personal journey that we're after. We're also uh, encouraging um, the consideration of justice. You know, how do we engage with others in the world in a way that is just? So we encourage all of that. It's a very holistic sensibility about spirituality and we want people to to get that to explore it to uh, stretch themselves in all those areas and um, again it's just one of the things that uh, sets us apart and one of the things that is really um, unique and enjoyable about this program I mentioned nourishing and that is another word that describes this program as as we gather as we pray and worship together, have deep conversations, uh, go for long walks in the great outdoors, um, sing and listen and learn. Our very beings are nourished and this program is a, a nourishing program and I give thanks for that. The next word is encouragement. Um, not only does through this sense of nourishing are people nourished people are encouraged uh, we become as we engage with each other we become encouragers of one another it's not just the leadership or the staff or um, you know the course facilitators that are involved with uh, making the program happen it's also what happens in the small groups and in the one-on-one -on -one conversations we are connected and we use our connections uh, to encourage one another, to take um, challenging, perhaps uh, risk-taking steps in our, in our lives and in the world, and um, know that we'll be held, know that we'll be held and understood and uh, continue to be encouraged in our path. Uh, and not just by the Holy Spirit, but by others who are in the program as well. It's very concrete in that way. And then finally, the last word uh, that I came up with is the word transformative. I think all the things that I've been talking about along the way really serve to, um, again, I'll use the word environment, create an environment where transformation happens. It may be personal, it may be, um, I don't know, it could extend beyond kind of the limits of, of what an individual can become or come to know about themselves, um, but it does transform us into beings who can take risks, who can step forward uh, in a way that promotes justice, promotes um, equality, promotes um, the kingdom of God in the world. And that changes not just us, but it changes those home environments that people go back to changes relationships, um, hopefully for the better, um, but that transformation uh, finds its way back out into the world. And I am so grateful for that, and I'm grateful to have been in a position to hear the stories of the ways, the many ways that that has played out. So the greatest joy that I've experienced as um, program director here really has to do with the people. Um, the leaders that I have been privileged to work with are extraordinary and um, they share from the depth of their hearts and they also share the things that they're excited about. And that is contagious. It just spills right over into all of us who are present with them. And um, what a gift that has been to learn from some of the, some of the best teachers in the field of, of Christianity and Christian spirituality. Uh, the other part of the, part of the pie, I guess, are the participants themselves. Um, I've met so many extraordinary people uh, and people who are, just have um, deeply seeking souls and 
uh, again, it's that sense of community that we create together. It takes all of us to create that sense. Whoever is gathered uh, during the course of a, a weekend or a week-long course, all of us create something very special together. And um, we experience that. It's an experience uh, beyond uh, kind of the personal level of that. So the people are really what make up this program, what make up this uh, community that we call the Spirituality Program. And it has given me so much joy and really companionship in my own life that um, that's one of the things that I'll miss most in moving on to another season. Um, but the people have definitely uh, been, the, been the source of the greatest joy for me in this role. So, about immediate plans for my retirement. Um, I don't have any big immediate plans. Uh, what I've come to realize is what I hope for um, following retirement, or at least in the initial part, is really a time of rest and Sabbath and perhaps even sabbatical that it might extend longer. So, so anyway, that's my, that's my story right now. My uh, immediate plans have to do with sabbatical. And I'm very excited about this. I'm excited to um, let things rest for a while. I realize that I've been working very hard, especially through the pandemic. And I also know that I'm a person that can, um, oh, press myself to, to self-improvement. And so just to have the time and be intentional about not improving myself for a while, I think will be a big gift. Um, another part of that is I, I just think that uh, life will unfold in ways that I can't imagine. Uh, in the recent past, in the recent months, um, there have been things that have, have come up in my personal life that have just kind of spoken to me like, no, you don't need to plan because whatever you plan probably isn't going to play out the way you think it is anyway. So just let it rest. Let it rest for a while. So um, that's kind of my immediate plans. Um, aside from uh, being able to spend more time with friends and family. In terms of spiritual practice, um, I've often talked about uh, practices that, in, that are about uh, discernment. And I believe those practices will just continue. They are part of my, um, part of my habit of living. And while I'm not focused on that right now, um, at some point they will become um, more important again, and they'll, they will pick back up. Prayer of exam and paying attention, mindfulness in my daily life, centering prayer. Long walks, one lo long walks have been a real uh, saving grace, especially in the last few years. And those will continue to be a part of my spiritual practice going forward. Uh, spiritual direction and companionship will certainly continue, and um, other things, fun things like uh, playing with art. I like to make art in various forms, so that will be a part of my, my routine in some way, shape, or form. And um, maybe even a little gardening. I have some new plants in the garden that I'm watching, and I look forward to that, to watching them grow. So here is a blessing for uh, the person who succeeds me in this role. May you be cloaked with a mantle of grace, seeking wisdom from the source of all wisdom. May you guide these programs with clarity and gentleness, seeking the best for all. May you receive joy and satisfaction from each workday. When challenges mount, May the gifts of this community encourage your soul. And may you, this program, and all who participate in it, flourish during your tenure.